We're getting a security blink, so I don't know that it will start, but let's try. Okay, well, it's doing more than the old engine did. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared, and this is Wrench Every Day. And uh, next to me is one of our two Dodge Chargers. For some reason, it seemed like a good idea at the time. We've got Pira here in the shop with us, and we've got a lift. Finally, we've got a two-post lift set up, and behind the camera, we have a four-post lift, which is going to make working on these cars a lot easier. And something that wasn't very easy was making the decision, do we build the donor parts car, the actual Orlando PD car, or do we build this one, the movie car that was from Need for Speed? Between your comments and tearing the body panels off this one, that was made actually very easy. This is going to be our donor car. So today, we have a lot to do. We are going to work to get this Gen 3 5.7 liter Hemi Eagle designation out of this car and into the blue one and hopefully start it. So uh, we better get working. Speaking of working, today's sponsor has got something that's gonna work for you. All right guys, so let me talk to you about something really important for all car owners and that is insurance. Now Jared is about to find out that a car he built himself can be really tricky to get a policy for except for the fact that we're using today's sponsor Policy Genius and they make it super simple to get the right policy for you. So if you guys haven't heard of Policy Genius, then you are missing out because Policy Genius makes it easy to compare home and auto insurance all in one place. Policy Genius has thousands of five-star reviews across Google and Trustpilot, and getting started is super easy. All you have to do is go to policygenius.com slash wrench and answer a few quick questions about you and your property. Then Policy Genius takes it from there. They'll show you price estimates for policies that fit your needs and help you find the best options. And their team of experts can look for ways to save you more, including bundling your home and auto policies. And the Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance company. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll switch you over for free, for zero dollars, for nothing. You cannot get better than that. In fact, Policy Genius has saved customers an average of $1,250 per year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. So head to policygenius.com slash wrench. It's in the link in the description below so you can see how much you can save on your home and auto insurance coverage. Policy Genius, when it comes to insurance, it's nice to get it right. So I am incredibly excited to have this lift here. It is going to make removing the engine quicker, safer, just everything all around better. And uh, yeah, that four post, we got Johnny up there. Who would have thought the pickup truck would have been the one that was too low to actually drive up? It almost got hung up. But we've got that one all the way up and I'm excited because we have the tall lifts. We can pick cars up and I can fit under them at six foot seven. Now, with the blue car, you saw us pull the engine in the way that we pulled the cylinder heads out and lifted it up and out of the top. We are going to go with more of the factory method. We've got to still undo those electrical connections, undo some suspension parts, and we're actually going to drop everything straight out the bottom. So yeah, we've got a lot to do, and I really do just need to get working because I want to drive a Charger in this episode. Somehow, it just needs to happen because it's been a long time.
man, that uh, goes a little bit smoother with that lift. And we have our engine liberated and pulled out. Something that was kind of funny is when I pulled the catalytic converters off, they were full of leaves just from sitting and someone threw them up in the car full of leaves. They wouldn't work very well. If you uh, left it that way, uh, our next order of business is we will have to get this thing lifted up, subframe back in so we can make Roadblock 1.0 roll, and uh, then we keep on just plucking away. One thing I'm gonna need to do is swap the O2 sensors. From some of that accident damage, the um, heat shields were pushing in just a little bit too much, and I didn't notice it, and when the engine was dropping out, it ripped my O2 sensor. But that's fine. The benefit of having multiple cars, you have multiple parts. And something I can't say 100%, because I'm not going to, uh, you know, pretend to be any type of Gen 3 expert, but that has a large oil cooler on it. And from what I understood, that was cop car only. So what that means is this is potentially already a cop car engine and on movie set, they had at least one real police car, which would have been the 2009. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get this thing ready to come off, bring the crane in tuck the subframe back in and bring in the Orlando PD car. Someone was uh, upset that some of the commenters didn't want us to call the blue car Project Roadblock and uh, well, it's earning the name. Uh, as we're removing the subframe, you notice it's not in there right now. We've got it over on the table, but there's four bolts that uh, hold these things in. And uh, we have three and a half. This uh, bolt decided to break off on us. We tried soaking it with our crud cutter. What happens on some of these unibodies, the chargers are really bad about it, is the rear bolts have a very large opening in the frame cavity and it just allows a ton of water to get in there. So you can see how thin that is. That's the same bolt. They're supposed to be the exact same thing. So we went ahead and Welder is out, but it did not work because the captive nut broke loose. I am currently trying to track down and see if I can get a new captive nut or if I need to try to get these fully separated. That we'll find out soon. My friend Jason is helping me get a couple of the parts we need. So we are not going to, uh, I got a nice bit of 
dirt there on the face. We're not going to be getting the engine in today and started like I wanted. That will have to uh, continue on over the next couple days as we're getting parts in, but we can still keep on working because we do need to go ahead and clean the subframe, get these holes cleaned up, knock some of the rust and dirt off of them, and we can put our Eagle Hemi up and mounted onto the subframe once we get these holes cleaned, and then it's just a matter of wait for parts and keep on going because we're going to start this Hemi this episode. I, I really want to. So uh, cue to some uh, rust cleanup and then uh, waiting for parts where we can uh, all be like Pira. Right, Pira? Yep. Hey guys, want to see something really cool? The Eagle has landed. The Eagle Hemi is mounted into our 2008 Charger chassis, and a lot of people were saying it wouldn't work because the computers were different. Well, the computers are actually all the same. They're on the table, um, but I did find something. It turns out the, the body harness to engine harness, those aren't the same. You can't plug. That, that doesn't work. So I went ahead and cleaned up. Sometimes it's good to just step back, take a couple minutes. Again, reevaluate. We've had it before with projects where they become a problem and it's just step away for a couple minutes. And I remembered someone was trying to swap this engine into a 2008 and went and took a look. And look, I got the body harness on the ground from that car because it's actually the body harness from the best I can tell, a 2009 Pursuit Charger. So maybe we're not out of it just yet. This, um, yeah, I could have just bought a 2008 engine and it would have gone right in. But, you know, let's just keep, <laughs> let's keep digging a hole. So I have looked into, inside the car and it appears all of the body side connectors on this side work, I think. They're at least the same shape and pin count. Haven't checked on this side yet. And uh, yeah, and then everything else needs to uh, switch over. That's tomorrow's problem because somebody is tired and has been pawing at my knee and going to the door and saying you'd like to go home. You're just, you're acting like you're a stuffed dog pair. Just gonna sit there and stare creepy. Can we have a high five at least? You, you missed, high five. Good girl. So we're gonna wrap up the day and uh, head home and in the morning, fix the body harness problem, right? Yes, it's gonna work, maybe. I checked a few things this morning. I put on the right shirt of the day, Bunker Branding page if you wanna get your own, uh, sometimes one man's trash is just trash shirt because it's kind of how I felt yesterday. But, but we've got good news. So we pulled the body harness out of roadblock one and I've gone inside, unplugged the connectors and we've laid them all out next to each other and it's a perfect match. Everything that we need is there, which indicates we should be able to pull this front body harness, install the 2009 body harness and it's gonna work, maybe. And I have confirmed something that 
is kind of interesting on the movie cars. So in this body harness, somewhere in all of that wiring, the one that came from this car, which was the one that they put into it, I noticed outfitter wiring in the front, which is not something a civilian charger would have. And then inside confirming, this is the outfitter plug. So one of the cars, at least one of the cars on the movie set was a proper pursuit car. Who knows which one it was? It was one that had a V8 in it, but we are going to be able to use the wiring harness. We're gonna make this work somehow. Just keep throwing our head at it and it's all gonna come together. We're gonna to make progress. We're going to have everything plugged in today. That's the goal. Can I do it? Of course I can, right? It, it's not that hard at all, except it is, it is that hard. Okay, let's get you guys caught up from all of that work that's been going on in the time lapse. We have got suspension on it. Now these bushings are destroyed and I'm not too worried about it because we've got plans for upgrades. They're just not here. I want a working charger before I order a ton of stuff. We need to drive this thing, make sure the engine is good um, before we put all new bushings in it. We've got some of those connectors dangling. And then if we come under here, we have exhaust, we have catalytic converters. This is gonna be a street driven car for now. And uh, those are required. And we got the leaves out of it. We've got our sway bar back on, something uh, the original car decided it didn't want. But you know, we've got it now. We've got, uh, we've got a drive shaft. That's real exciting. So I got the drive shaft in and bolted up. And again, this is not in the best of shape. We will replace it, also not in great shape. Along the bushings is our rear differential bushing. Don't have the rest of the exhaust on. Because you know, if we're gonna do our first startup, let it, let it be loud, sound kind of fun. So we're making huge progress. I'm gonna lower the car and show you what we got done on top. Okay, and with the car down, we can see fuse boxes back in it. There is a wiring harness now in the front of the car and we're able to plug that in. You know, the, the main uh, connector that was wrong to begin with, but we are now right with that. We have our Eagle ECU in the car. 
So what we're gonna need to do is once we're able to power up the car, we should only have to write the VIN number of this car, what every other computer has in it, to that ECU, in theory. Let's hope, because you know we've been moving along really good with this car uh, and its theories. Now, one thing that is preventing us from keying on right now is our fuel line down there, eh, right here. Let's see, maybe you can see it. That is not connected because between all of our engines, this car's original fuel line broke and roadblock one, it was cut. So I've got that coming from Dodge, that still needs to get here. And then the other key piece is our cooling pack, our radiators and everything. So I've got both cars radiators set up here. This is the original police car. This is the one out of roadblock. The sub wiring harness for our cooling fans is different. That's not a problem as I can just unhook this one and move it over. And then hopefully, finally, we might hear this thing come to life. I'm getting excited. I'm, I'm a little annoyed with chargers. There's been a lot between the two channels, but that's okay. I am excited to make this thing work and it's really transformed into a whole lot more than what I pictured when I saw a dusty car in the back of a warehouse. And it's quite evident. There's a reason it was a dusty car in the back of the warehouse, but we're not giving up on it. We're not giving up on both of these. We're gonna make it work. That's a lot of starting fluid in my oil. Don't need to taste it. I don't know why people make it such a big deal about not getting oil on your fingers when you pull that out. I'm kind of laughing at myself. Out of uh, just kind of instinct, I always will take an oil cap and set it on the hood latch so I can't close the hood and start the engine without putting oil on it first. That works perfectly when it has a hood. I've got an oil drain over there. Uh, which is kind of cool. You don't need that when you don't have a lift. So it was nice to be able to pick this up and very easily drain that oil, which smelled of so much starting fluid. If you can't get a car running, don't put 12 cans of starting fluid through it because all that does is thin out your oil. Um, and if you do get it started, your bearings aren't gonna be happy because they have just water as lubrication. So we've got fresh oil in it. We topped off a little bit of transmission fluid. I filled the power steering reservoir and moved the rack back and forth. And we have the key and we unlock and we get that light which has so much dust and junk on it it smells terrible but we are going to try to turn the engine over we're not going to actually get it to start yet because i haven't programmed the vin and i'm kind of doing this on purpose i want the engine to go ahead and turn over some we want to work on getting fuel pressure up and just kind of let it turn and get oil pressure up what we may get is kind of a quick fire stumbles for a second and turns off once the immobilizer and security systems kick in, in theory. So I am going to start an outside camera and then we're gonna go inside and see what it does. All right, let's open up our door here. Now my steering wheel is a little bit off center because those bushings are so shot, things are kind of wiggling around, but that gives me a nice path to put my key in. A nice path to put my key in. There we go, key on. I heard a throttle plate move. We're getting a security blink, so I don't know that it will start, but let's try. I hear injectors going. Okay, well, it's doing more than the old engine did, but I think we've got a bunch of trouble codes set, so I'm gonna try to get my scanner hooked up and see if we can convince it the VIN number is correct and I'm also going to put a battery charger on it 
Okay, so I have been working with the scan tool software and have kind of finally figured it out. I had to get it a subscription and do a bunch of little things off camera, but we have finally successfully gotten the VIN number. So everything should hopefully mismatch or quit mismatching. Wake up, quit making awful noises. So one thing that's really cool about this software is you have your entire map and currently there's lots of little codes around everywhere that's my uh, police interface um and it will quick pull let's see codes here i need to go through and clear a lot as you can see there's a lot of stored codes meaning they're old but it all has to do with lights and we don't have many lights in there so i'm not worried about those we got some low tire pressure little things like that things that aren't a concern with starting one thing I am curious is I'm still getting a security, come on, security light flashing, but I want to try it. And, hey, um, it's running. I don't think we have that big a cam in it. It's kind of smoothing out a little bit. Holy cow. Well. I think, come on, we're getting a little flash of the check engine light because I think we're getting catalyst damaging misfires. Uh, let's try a little throttle. Yeah, it's running. It's not quite running good yet. We'll have to figure it out. My guess is it's probably got some bad gas in it, but um, let's charge the camera and keep looking. <laughs> We've got a running charger. Not a good running charger, but a running charger. Going through and checking the computer, it gave us two cylinders that it was directly cutting fuel from when it detected the misfire. So that was where the first two that we looked at. The plugs looked good, but they looked dry. Tell me the injectors most likely were clogged up a little bit from sitting. This is really common with the used engine. If you buy a used engine and end up starting it misfiring, your injectors are probably just a little bit dirty. You can take them off, clean them, change them, use your old ones. It's just sitting on a fuel injector with this modern fuel isn't the best form. So we swapped those two injectors, cleaned everything on the odd cylinder side, fired it up, was instantly running a lot better, and I did the basic RPM test. And what that is, you can do it with a computer or with an engine like this, you just come and start unplugging your coils and listen for the engine tone to change. That lets you know that that cylinder was firing correctly and contributing to the running condition. So with it running, we unplugged all the coils one at a time on that side and each one changed the RPM, which told us that side misfire was fixed. And we came over to our even side and we found number six, decided it didn't want to be part of the party. It was not firing, unplugging the coil, had no RPM change. So we went ahead, did the same thing, pulled each of the fuel injectors on this side and cleaned them just real quick with a little blast of brake cleaner. Three of them came back clean, really nothing coming out. Number six spat a bunch of junk back out, telling us it most likely was clogged. Also to kind of check and see if it's a totally dead injector, we took cylinder six injector and swapped it with number two. So now if the misfire followed number two, we know that injector just isn't working. So let's go ahead and jump in, start it up, see how it's going to run. And I'll actually show you the simple way of where you're unplugging each coil to listen for that RPM change. The one thing I will caution you is you need to have a scan tool because with a computer controlled car, it is going to set a code for an open coil circuit, which you can expect. So let's see how it runs now. All right, that open exhaust is uh, nice and loud and we have it up and running. You can already tell by how much less the car is shaking, it's running a lot smoother. So we'll go through and I'm going to unplug cylinder one. So you hear how the engine sounds. I'm gonna unplug cylinder, I'm gonna unplug, there we go. And you can hear that misfire. Let's go cylinder three. Misfire. You just hear how it changes ever so slightly where you get that lug, 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 lug. Five. And seven. 
So again, just the smallest change, and we now know it's all working. So let's come over here. Now you can hear a fuel injector makes a real soft tick. And you can hear that soft, quiet tick. What I was getting from this cylinder, and this is another thing you can look for when you're chasing a misfire, is a very, very loud, harsh tick. And that's because the solenoid is trying to fire and it's not getting a full fuel supply. So, this was our problem before. Oh yeah. So that one's working now. We don't need to unplug these other two, but what we do want to check is two, because that's where number six is injector went, and, and it's misfiring. Perfect. So we now have a Hemi that's going to idle happily, and uh, let's uh, let's rev it a little bit, right? And then I'll hook up a scan tool and see what all of my current codes are. All right, and does this have attack? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You guys said, well not all of you, but some of you said you couldn't put a 2009 Eagle Hemi in a 2008. And with a little bit of perseverance and a lot of stupidity, you can. Oh. All right, I think this is a fantastic stopping point on the video. We have a running LX chassis Dodge Charger that uh, was a good bit of work. It's part movie car, part just Orlando PD car, part not as questionable decision as it used to be. It's running. I am very excited. And in our next Dodge Charger episode, we're going to start making it look like a car again. We're going to get body parts on it. And we're not just going to go with the blue car parts. We're going to start making it look a little bit like the movie car. Obviously, they'll be blue, but everything we took off the other Charger, we're going to get mounted onto this one, as well as fix the front push bar mount so we can put a push bar on it and all the other little tasks that we need to do to get it ready for its first drive, which is going to be a very special one. I'm kind of excited about that first drive. But that's gonna go ahead and wrap up for the day. I appreciate you always hanging out with me in the shop while we uh, make some very questionable decisions, which you guys should always do. And when it comes to buying Dodge Chargers, just, just buy two. You need a parts car.